City of Fairhope regularly scheduled City Council meeting. We're going to have Pastor Tim Clark with Celebration Church lead us with our prayer tonight, followed by the pledge. Thank you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity tonight, Lord, for us to gather together. Lord, I pray for your wisdom and your discernment for the council and for all those that have to make decisions tonight, Lord. And I pray, Father, that as opportunities are had tonight, Lord, to, to honor those that are honored, Father, I pray most importantly, God, that your name would be, would be uh, glorified tonight in all that happens. And, Father, we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <coughs> Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right. Uh, before we get started, Council, I do have a couple of proposed uh, changes to the agenda. The first will be to add as a uh, Item number 21, resolution that we discussed regarding um, the Grand Hotel and the repair of the water line. And the other item would be on item number 18 to amend those uh, amounts for the total project cost of 250000 and a city match of 125000 Any? Council President, questions? I move to add the resolution declaring an emergency to repair the water line and to also amend the amounts on item 18 uh, to uh, an estimate of 250, 250,000 with a city's match of 125,000. All right. Second. I got a motion and a second. Any additional comment? All right, all those in favor of amending the agenda, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, motion passes. Uh, First item on the agenda is the approval of the May 9th uh, regular city council meeting minutes and the May 9th work session minutes. I move to approve as submitted. All right. Second. Got a motion and a second. All those in favor of the approval, please say aye. 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 Any opposition? All right. Motion passes. Uh, Mayor, your report. Good evening. So tonight I don't have 16 proclamations to give out or to read, but I might have 16 certificates to give out. So um, first and foremost, I just want to let everybody know publicly that we will be doing some system upgrades to our um, software system that the city uses for utility billing. So our systems will be offline on Wednesday and Thursday in order to, to do those updates. So if you are wanting to make online utility payments or anything at City Hall, we'll have to do that on Friday. So we will be putting out social media and notifying everybody, but want to make sure I said that publicly tonight for those who are listening. Also, I just want to thank all the city departments um, for, for their how busy they've been during May. They have really, um, there's been a lot going on. And for a lot of our employees, it's a personal time of being busy because they have graduates or end of school, that kind of stuff. But, you know, from the police department to recreation to public works, everybody's been really busy with graduation and events and, and different things. So just want to thank them for their hard work and all their diligence and making sure that all of our citizens are taken care of and all those events are just go off with, you know, without a hitch. So thank you to them. And then the first thing I want to do tonight is recognize um, these gentlemen here that are seated here. They are the Bay Shore baseball team, and they have won for the second time in a row the Class 1A State of Alabama High School Baseball Championship. So we... We have a lot of great athletes, you know, here in Fairhope and watched a lot of these kids go through our rec programs here in the parks and just really excited to see what they're doing there at Bayshore and excited for the opportunities they've had to represent our area at the state and just appreciate, you know, the great sportsmanship and the great athleticism that y'all show when you go to um, represent Fairhope at the state. So thank y'all very much. And I would like to recognize y'all all with certificates. So I'm going to call your name up. And so I'm going to call your name. And when I call your name, if you'll just come up. I hate this. I'm going to turn this way because I hate this microphone being this way because my back's to everybody. So tonight we have Cooper Schultz. I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, no, don't take that one. I'm hoping they put these in order, but they're not in order. So there you go, Cooper. I also have in here a photo from um, Mr. John Haig. He, he gave me authorization to get print a team photo for everybody. So I have a team photo in there for you as well. Okay, thank you. 
And then Braden Froyce. Congratulations. Thank you. John Malone. Michael Bryant. Street Crooms. I'm hoping I'm saying that right. William Nance. Thank you. Congratulations. Riley Malone. We have a lot of Malones on this team. Peyton Loftus. Jace Jones. Jack Wheeler. Jack Malone. Cole Dean. Brooks Jones. Joel Chandler. Nate Crooms. And then Ben Whiteside. I also wanted to recognize the coaches who are here because we know they have the hard job other than the parents. So they have to rally all these kids, make sure they're where they're supposed to be and all the practices and everything. So thank you for what y'all do. That's um, head coach Jeff Haig. Jeff, thank you. Um, Jimmy, Jimmy Walker. Don Rubel. Um, Joe Hutchins. Jeff Hosterman and May Dykema. So thank you, gentlemen, for being here tonight. It was just a small thing we could do to show how much, um, you know, how, how happy we are for you and how excited we are to have you as part of the Fair Hope community. Thank you. So the next thing I would like to do, I have one more recognition, then I'll be done. I promise. So this is really exciting, too. We have, um, we have Nell Haig right here with us. Nell, would you come up? So Nell is being recognized tonight for recognition of seven years of dedication and commitment to Fairhope's walking school bus. She has not missed a day in seven years. Can wow. you believe that? Seven years. So for your support to this program and um, through the Baldwin County Trailblazers in the city of Fairhope, we wanted to pre present you a certificate of recognition. Congratulations. Very good, baby girl. Charlene, Charlene Lee also wanted to say a few words about the walking school bus. myself done now thank you thank you mayor and uh to, to the bayshore guys congratulations on quite an achievement and just um just for the rest of the crowd if we got any seniors on the team would you mind standing up for a second jackie, jackie, one, jackie. Ooh. might be a third one coming senior. all right, <laughs> all right. <laughs> congratulations You're getting to leave on a high note and uh, what a what a remarkable thing to be participating in as uh, you're going out as a senior. Congratulations. 
Um, we've got public participation next. If if y'all want to stick around for the meeting, we would love to have you. But if you wanted to uh, get up and exit, now might be a good time. All right. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Quitters. Bye, Braden. Congrats. Congratulations. Bye, Miss Charlene. guess anybody wanted to stick around to hear what we we have to say I? all right uh, at this time we're gonna go ahead and open the floor for public participation um, related to agenda items that'd be items uh, 6 through 21 if you'd like to address the council come forward give your name and address and you've got three minutes All right, seeing no one, we'll go ahead and close the floor and turn it over to council comments. Councilman Burrell. Yeah, we, uh, I gave the committee reports in the work session, but what I'd, I'd like to do, just uh, make a few comments to the, to the council and, I, and the mayor. I've been, been thinking a lot about this budget cycle and what we kind of been going through as a nation and uh, supply chain issues, labor shortages. And what I want for us to consider, and I, and I think, I didn't go into it in the work session when we debated how much money we should spend on, on a project and matching uh, in, a, in a federal grants program. But one of the things been weighing on my mind is, is, is and, and employees, I hope you'll appreciate this because, you know, I'm always really tough on, on everything, on everything spending wise. I'm, I'm tough. But, um, and I've been proud of what we've been able to give, but I think that this year w we need to make sure that we retain our employees and we need to make sure that we budget enough money to retain the talent that we have and, and that's what I really why I want to that's why I want to pinch pennies in other you know for capital uh, expenditures and things that we there are luxury items I want us to watch all that spending because uh, it's only going to get worse for for a while and and I want to invest this year, I really want to try to make an investment in our people, more so than any other year in my, my 10 years on the council. So I want you all to think about that. Well, I know they appreciate hearing you say that. Yeah. Uh, no, I skipped that because it's a public hearing. So, okay, so we'll do that later. That, that'll be up next. Right now, we're on item number four right now. Yes, sir. Uh, Councilman Martin. Um, yeah, Jack got me um, uh, kind of stumbled there for a minute. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, but yeah, we definitely need to uh, invest in our employees for sure. Um, I think we need more, to be honest. I'm glad he talked about it. Um, but um, I want to um, give um, um, a big um, congratulations to all our graduating seniors whether high school or college you know it is the month of may we've got a lot of kids that are um, about to enter into the real world some of them so i want to give my blessings and prayers to all those kids and families that are on that particular part of their journey in this life um and um that's all i have to say uh, i think i coached about about 10 of those kids in that that group right there it's, it's pretty cool to see. No doubt why they won the state championship. <laughs> no, well, I'm no not doubt. saying that. That's you. I'm, not, I'm just saying it's good to see them grow up, man. You know, it's really cool. It's really cool. <laughs> just want to put that out there. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Councilman Boone. All right. Well, I, I just wanted to, to echo, echo Councilman Martin's uh, comments about all the graduating seniors, whether it's high school or college. Uh, exciting times congratulations and, and safe wishes um and, and also i want to throw out um just a 
uh, I guess, uh, answer prayers for the Olmstead family. I know we had um, city employee, and I won't get into specifics, but uh, they had a, a very scary incident over the weekend, and, and it turned out um, incredibly well. And, and a lot of times you hear about tragedies, and this certainly could have been one, but it turned out very well. And um, I think everybody involved with the city of Arabs is very grateful um, with the outcome of that. So blessings, I guess, to the Olmstead family. Um, next item up is um, item five. This is a public hearing to discuss the improvements of the park facilities at North Beach Park. Jessica, would you like to kick us off? So as we discussed in the work session, this is for ADECA's Land and Water Conservation Plan grant application. Um, this does adjust what was uh, put out in the council packet and the media packet um, through that request that was made during the work session. Uh, to go back over the project for a moment, uh, we will would be looking at the Ferret Duck Pond restoration. The project is for North Beach Park and currently includes diverting stormwater runoff from the adjacent residential areas, adding a new sidewalk around the perimeter of the ponds, adding a new prefabricated pedestrian bridge and additional amenities, um, which in the plan is presented tonight includes picnic tables, benches, and a gazebo. Um, so that current budget is $493,460. Um, the request was made earlier to reduce that to a total of $250,000 and to make adjustments to the estimates or to the estimated work that could be done as a result of that. Um, so I can answer any questions or we can, we'll do whatever we need to do. Why don't we, um, if you don't mind hanging around up here, sure. why don't we go ahead and open the, the floor for the public hearing. And if you're um, a member of the public and wish to speak uh, to the council on this topic, just step forward and give your name and address and, and uh, Jessica will stay up here. And if she's got any, oh, we've got a sign in sheet actually. Yeah, we do have a sign in sheet. Thank so. you, yeah, please sign in there and Jessica will stay up in case she needs to be the one to answer your questions. So floor is open. My name is Ken Niemeyer, 7 Fells Avenue in Fairhope. And when the notice of this uh, project came out, uh, pursuant to the article in the newspaper, I called and left a message for Jessica and never received a response. And so I'm still in the dark as to what the improvements were. But before uh, that complaint, uh, the city seems devoted to building unnecessary and out of character projects throughout our city. The Disneyland approach is not what Fairhope was a founded on. And building sidewalks where no sidewalks are needed, rather than going with natural terrain, in, for example, the crosswalk that she's talking about, the gazebo she's talking about, it's like the benches that we brought in, all these metal benches that then broke, fell apart. The simple basic approach has been the history of Fairhope. We do not need artificial improvements to a natural park and a natural beach. And I'd be interested in eventually getting what I asked Jessica for in my phone message. Mr. Neymar, I believe you may have left that on my mobile phone. It was the telephone number that was posted in the newspaper. Okay. So that information was not available until we had it published on Friday on the website with the council packet. We did not have that but you did not respond to my phone call. Well, I apologize. Thank you. All right, thank you. Mr. would you mind signing in, please? Thank you. All right, any other uh, individuals wish to speak about um, item number five, the public hearing about the improvement of park facilities at North Beach Park? Did he give an address? Yeah, okay. I think he, he gave it, yes, sir. Anyone else? Yes, sir. I wanted to second the comments that were made by Mr. Demeyer, but I coincide with what he had to say. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was going to say that the city has been working closely with the Olmstead family and the Olmstead family and the Olmstead family. Come on. You just need to come sign in and give your name and address. Come on away. My name is David S. Jones, 10 Fells Avenue in Fairhope. I live right down by the bluff, so I'm very concerned about what's going to be happening with that area. 
And uh, I just wanted to be say that I totally support Mr. Niemeyer's comments. I feel he has a, the best understanding and has been more involved in all aspects of this than anyone else that I know. He's interacted with everyone and has gone to great lengths to try to get answers and, and response and understanding of what actually is going to take place. So I'd just like it to be made publicly known that I totally support Ken Niemeyer's position. Okay. And I'll just just add a little bit to this. So I know the duck pond, it, it is a little bit of a, uh, a mess down there, I guess, from needing to be cleaned up. The filtration system needs to be addressed because that water does ultimately flow out into, uh, into the bay. So I think the, the city staff is just looking at this as an opportunity to address some improvements that, that need to be made there and do it in a way that could also qualify for a grant. So we did uh, discuss during the work session tonight and we, we lowered that um, amount from about 493,000 to 250, which would be 125 from the city, 125 from, from the grant. So um, of course that's if, if it even gets approved, but I do appreciate y'all coming forward and I, I hear what you're saying. Sim less is more sometimes and, We're and I appreciate that. All right, would anyone else like to address the council on this item? All right, hearing none, we'll go ahead and close the floor on the public hearing. Thank you, Ms. Jessica. Um, next item up, this is a site plan review and approval request of FST 412 Fairhope LLC, the owner for a site plan approval of 412 Fairhope Avenue, a three unit multi occupancy uh, project and the subject property is zoned B2 Central Business District and is approximately 0 .07 acres and it's on the south side of Fairhope Avenue. Uh, last time we spent 52 minutes talking about the one. Yep. We're Teresa, gonna, we're going we're gonna to go lightning five, speed tonight. Yeah. We're going yeah. to move on through. Okay. I think this is going to be an example where city, developer, architect all meet and come up with a Solution that makes everybody happy, yep. right? I, I'm, I've, I left the slides from last uh, council meeting on here, but I'm going to skip through the things we've already discussed and and show you um, kind of the proposal in front of you. Um, we did meet after that meeting. Uh, Richard Johnson, Jamie Rollins, myself met with the applicant, its architect and engineer, and the uh, after that meeting. Uh, we, we received the image you see on the screen, which is uh, utilization of the space, unused space in a angled parking space that uh, where a tree wheel could be located. Um, in general, we looked at this, um, you know, and one option is still a revision of the balcony, but we had to look at this um, at what could be done. So this would benefit one person. That's not really a public good. So. You know, that conversation was had and the option that came back to us, we did agree uh, that this was enough room for a tr street tree to thrive. To be clear, it would require removing the tree that's currently there and putting in a new tree in a new tree wheel. Um, we did not feel that this one tree was in the public good. So the option that was presented to us, and I just want to quickly show you the screen here, um, Currently, the, that block on the north side uh, has, has street trees on, on both ends of the block, but none in the middle. Uh, we were presented with a plan that would add five of these tree wells to that block and the, the trees to go with it. One uh, would probably be putting in the tree well right now. There is a nearby street tree that doesn't require removing or taking down. So go ahead and install the, street, the, the tree well but when needed, the tree could be replaced and placed in that tree well and not remove an existing one. So um, we did look at this. I want to be very clear, this, is not, this proposal does not remove any parking spaces. Uh, it's using, take, using the, uh, utilizing the unused portion of those spaces. Um, staff does, you know, some of our challenges is what, especially when you're, you're looking at public property, uh, the right of way, you know, is, is there something here that uh, is in the general public interest? And, and we do think that is an improvement for that block. Um, so we would be okay with this pro uh, solution with c two conditions. Uh, that we're moved pretty quick here, so it's approved conceptually. 
if, if the council approves it, that would the construction plans and exact locations would have to be approved by Public Works. And then the same condition we had last time, the sidewalk in front of the building shall be pavers and not brick stamp concrete. That was just a note that was put on a plan. We want to make sure that's, that's accounted for and pavers will be approved by Public Works and installed and repaired by the developer. If you all have any questions, I'm here to uh, answer those. Council, Council President, I have one question. Yes, does, sir. If, uh, does the site plan uh, review and approval, does that include the um, addition of all of those new tree wells? Uh, that, that would be a condition of approval? Yes. Mm -hmm. As presented to us, there's five locations. I, I don't, I not only think it's acceptable, I think it's a vast improvement on that street and uh, a vast improvement on that street. And I really like it. And I appreciate you, Hunter and I spent a, an hour out there one day with a, with a with a tape measure and a can of paint and i mean i'm sure to walk by the bay didn't know what we were painting in that parking spot out there but uh by the time we put you know all our paint in there it, it looked like graffiti but uh i i, I really council i really like it and i think it's a, 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 a very good illustration of everybody putting their collective minds together and coming up with not only a solution that's just acceptable but something that's going to make that streetscape much better Yeah, I think it's good. I mean, this is what I asked. I, I thought this was a great idea to add to the trees. You know, it's a win-win situation. Councilman B. It's nice when everybody can work together and get a solution. Uh, I like that. Brian, Ryan, Hunter, Gardner, thank you all. Larry, for working on that. City staff, appreciate Richard, that. Richard, Jamie. Well, yep. Yeah, Richard, yeah. Jamie. Jamie. I mean, every, sure. everybody that was involved, yeah. thank you. Uh, thank you for that. Well, Council, uh, what's your pleasure? Make a motion to approve the site plan uh, subject to the two recommendations. Um, and now, was there any other uh, um, subject twos I need to add to that motion? Just those two conditions. That, conditions. Would, that would include it all, right? Yes, yeah, sir. Okay. Second. That's all right, got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All right, hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, motion passes. Thank you, guys. Yes, sir. You need anything? All right. I knew if you brought Ron in here, you'd get, get the problem taken care of, Ron. All right, Brett. All right, y'all have a good evening. Thank you, guys, for working with us. Um, item number seven is a resolution that the city of Fairhope approves the procurement of a 10 ton um, R410 package heat pump for, from train uh, for the Rotary Youth Center. And Richard, this was uh, available for direct procurement, and it is uh, budget total cost not exceed nine thousand fifty six dollars. Yeah, it was already budgeted; budget. it just went up, yeah, up you know, like everything else. Yeah. So, so I move to approve the second. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion? All right, hearing none. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, motion passes. Uh, next item is a resolution that the city of Fairhope approves the procurement of one. Uh, 400A, 208 volt, three phase, four wire, three pole series, 300 automatic transfer switch um, in NEMA 3R enclosure for City Hall from Genco and authorizes procurement based on automatic transfer switches exempt from formal bidding. Uh, total cost not to exceed $6,005. Any questions for Ben on this? I, I was going to just address. Yes, so ma'am. Y'all have specifics, Ben can answer those questions, but. This is a non-budgeted item, right. and yeah. the reason that it is so important is because it cuts all of our communications to City Hall. So um, in the event that we have um, an incident where we need to bring operators in or we have to use computers, the automatic switch, the generator doesn't automatically cut on. Somebody has to actually come in and, and flip that switch in order for City Hall to have power. So I asked them to look at this and to get a cost on that automatic switch to make sure that we can keep communications at City Hall. What, what generator will it go to? It actually operates... Ben, correct me if I'm wrong. It, there's. It's going to go to the police department okay. generator. Okay. It goes, it goes PD and Civic Center Steel State Manual. Okay, cool. So, yeah. so this is a good idea. They're going to come. Yeah. We're going to do the labor on it. They're coming and fire it off and set it up for us. Okay. Can we, we get it this year? 
Well, uh, <laughs> 19 to 21 weeks. Wow. 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 That's ridiculous, dude. And, and I think it's Jack proof. touched on this earlier. Yeah, this is just going to continue next year. This isn't going away. Yeah, it's not going to go away. Not until we, uh, supply chain issues. That's a lot of stuff that needs to happen. Mm. Um, All right. No, thanks, man. Thank you. All right. So moved. Thank you, sir. We got a motion. Yeah. Second. Second. And, and two seconds. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, motion passes. Item number nine is a resolution that the City of Fairhope approves repairs for the Elgin Whirlwind Street Sweeper for Public Works Department repairs provided by Sansom Equipment Company, a sole source provider of equipment parts. And the total cost does not have to be let out for bid. Total cost not to exceed $8,751.52. Any questions for Richard? I, I just got to ask one question. They, this is kind of being funny. Did they wreck it, or what? What happened? Big part breakdown. And you know, it, it's when you have expensive equipment, when it does break, it's expensive. This is the four wheeler. Uh, we purchased it about four and a half years ago, about three hundred sixty-five thousand. It has a pony engine on it that that runs all of the broom sweeper uh, in the back. Okay. This is the fluid coupler. Basically, it's it is the part that runs all of the accessories. So we're down and out. And as you can see, the parts itself were sixty-five hundred dollars. So mm. uh, we and we need to fix it. What, what uh, can we get that? Is that going to be how long will it take to get that part in? Just curious. Uh, I think under some trust, they went ahead and ordered it, and we're hoping that it arrives in a relatively timely manner. But we're at the mercy of the supply chain gods right now. But plenty of time, hopefully, for the Christmas parade, right? Oh no! <laughs> hopefully, before <laughs> before June. All right. Council, any other questions or comments on this item? No. Right. Move. Got a motion? A second. And a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Motion passes. Item number 10 is a resolution that the City of Fairhope approves the procurement of the annual contract for dumpster service for screenings from BCC Waste Solutions for the Wastewater Department to include service three times per week for one year with up to two quarterly, two yearly renewals for a total cost not to exceed ten thousand nine hundred dollars. Any questions for Jason on this? We didn't get a chance to cover these items. Jason, you just want to give us a highlight, I guess. On, I mean, it's just an annual deal, something we approve every every year. Yes, sir. It's a different company this year because okay. the price went up tremendously with the previous company. It's just the screenings off the headworks. You can imagine what this, what that entails. You know, off the top of your head, what the prior year contract was? I do not. Okay, I was, I was just curious. I know it was a significant increase with the other companies that you're switching. Mm -hmm. That okay. was the reason we got three. I think three or four quotes. You should have them in front of you. And this okay. was the best price we got. And it's because of the way the headworks is designed, we have to use the small dumpsters with the casters to be able to move them around. And it's, so it requires a, a unique truck and a company to do it. So gotcha. all that's really being also used, looked at in the headworks upgrade to be able to go to a standard dumpster. And hopefully that's something that we could do in house and not have to pay out. Okay. All right, any questions for Jason? Would anyone like to make a motion? I'll make a motion to for the procurement. Second. We've got a motion and a second. <coughs> Any further discussion? All right. Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposition? Motion passes. Uh, number 11 is a resolution that the City of Fairhope approves the procurement and installation of the 16 by 12 rolling steel door for the City of Fairhope electric barn to Bailey door for a total cost not to exceed $11,698. Any questions for Conrad on this? It's pretty self-explanatory. We didn't get a chance to cover it, but. Well, it's an unbudgeted expense, so I'd like to know why, why, what happened, right. why we have to have it now. Yes, sir. It's probably a 20 plus year old door that we've patched numerous times, and now it's just finally not Falling working. off. <laughs> we've had a door company come look at it and said, we need to replace it, they can't fix it anymore. We didn't. We didn't think we needed to budget it. This, you know, in the budget year last year. No, sir. I wasn't in charge of that last year. So. <laughs> That's what I'd say. <laughs> but I am this year, though. I'm putting in for four. Thanks, Conrad. All right. Any other questions for Conrad on this? No. 
We'll make a motion. Got a motion? Second. And a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, motion passes. Item number 12 is a resolution that the City Council hereby approves and authorizes Mayor Sherry Sullivan to execute a memorandum of understanding between the State of Alabama acting by and through the Alabama Department of Transportation, uh, 68V Harvest Green East LLC, and the City of Fairhope regarding a traffic signal and certain roadway improvements to be installed and completed as set forth in the MOU. Mayor, would you like to hit the highlights of this? I'd be happy to. Um, this is basically, we are holding money from um, the Alabama Department of Transportation um, until this project has to um, be let. So it's $250,000. Um, there's two other partners that will contribute, but we're just going to basically hold the money. It'll be a pass-through. And the contract does say that if in the event there is a cost increase, obviously the city will not pay any money for anything. We're just holding the money. Okay. Council, any questions for the mayor on that? No, I move to approve and authorize the mayor to enter the MOU. All right, we've got a motion. Second. And a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, no one opposed. Motion passes. Item number 13 is a resolution that Mayor Sherry Sullivan is hereby authorized to execute a contract between the City of Fairhope and Gulf South Pipeline Company for the NNS and NNS uh, SCO no notice agreement. This agreement shall be effective beginning April 1st, 2023. And shall continue in full force and effect through March 31st, 2028. Jeremy, and do you want to bring your assistant up here? He's been here for two hours and not. <laughs> I had a babysitter cancel at four. He had he hadn't. So I was like, uh -oh. said a word. He deserves to he deserves to get up and walk around a little bit. You want to get up? No. Okay, we won't so, make him. Yeah, sorry about that, but no. babysitter canceled, so he hadn't made a peep. This is our contract with Gold South. This is actually, it's not about how much money we're paying for the gas, but the amount of gas they're reserving each month for the city of Fairhope. So we've had this same contract for years. It's kind of the old phone plan that you have that they don't offer anymore. As long as you don't change it, you continue getting it. Gotcha. Kind of the same thing with Gold South. We have a <coughs> contract, last time we signed it was 2017. Um, this contract will go for five years. It won't start until 2023, but it'll have to be signed a year in advance. Okay. So nothing changes the amount of gas that Gulf South is allotting to provide to the city of Fairhope. We have plenty of room to grow over the next five years. Okay. So there's no reason to increase the amount of storage that they're saving for the city of Fairhope. So this just has to do with the amount of gas Gulf South is storing for the city of Fairhope each month. They do, you know, it's higher in the winter months. So but that's the amount of gas that they're storing each day for the city of Fairhope. All right. And, and it's always done in five year increments. Well, the last basically. time we signed, I think it was 2016 or 17. And, and then we it went was for probably from 18 to 23. Um, so, okay. This next one will be five years. Okay. Uh, council, any questions for Jeremy on this? Yep. All right. Would anyone like to make a motion? So moved. Got a motion? Second. And a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Anyone opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, Jeremy. Um, let's see. Item number 14 is a resolution that Mayor Sherry Sullivan is hereby authorized to execute a settlement and release agreement between the City of Fairhope and Mediacom Southeast LLC based on the findings from the audit by the city's consultant uh, for a period starting January 1st and ending December 31st, uh, January 1st of 2020 and ending December 31st of 2021 in the amount of $6,072.55. And Mayor, my understanding is this is money we're receiving after that audit, correct? All right, uh, Marcus, did you wanna address this at all or Mayor, either one? I actually Nothing think different. Lisa probably worked most on this okay. than anyone else. Sorry. Well, right she in the middle, worked, I was close. She, she worked with Greg Fender and um, he's the one who brought this to us. So obviously we know we can trust Greg and his opinion on things so this is where this came from all right yep. council any questions for lisa no. all right anyone like to make a motion no, I need to ask her. <laughs> so moved second you got a motion and a second any further discussion all right hearing none all those in favor please say aye aye, aye. aye. any opposed right, motion passes um item number 15 is a resolution that the city council authorizes mayor sullivan 
to write a letter in support of the Friends of the Fairhope Public Library Impact 100 grant application for the Fairhope Public Library to renovate, furnish, and equip the libraries upstairs and allow the Fairhope Public Library use of the library building and property to run the city of Fairhope's public library. And I see we've got uh, the library board here in support and Tamara, our director. Any questions for the mayor or for Tamara regarding this item? This is just for Impact 100 grant application, just saying we support it. All right. I'll make a motion. Got a motion? Second. And a second. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, motion passes. Thank you. Appreciate y'all being here. Good luck with it. Yep. Good luck you get it. Um, item number 16 is a resolution that the City of Fairhope authorizes the submission of a grant application to ADECA for assistance from the electric vehicle infrastructure in the amount of 200000 or 80% of the total proposed cost to install two DC fast chargers at Plantation Point Shopping Center in the 20% match from the Alabama Municipal, Municipal Electric Authority uh, to be held in reserve and authorizes mayor to sign and the required grant application documents on behalf of the city. And Jessica, I think, covered this earlier. This is for the uh, charging stations at Plantation Point. So any questions on this that we weren't able to cover first thing? Yeah, I just want to point out that, uh, well, first I want to thank AMEA for making the funds available to us should we uh, uh, apply for this grant money. Uh, but secondly, I want to point out that uh, in a very short time, our uh, solar charging station out here has been used. Uh, you know, I got to be honest, I, I saw a Jeep, if it was yours and you're watching tonight, I'll apologize to you because I like an electric Jeep out there. What is that? They're just taking up, they're just parking out of the sun. Guess what? They were plugged in. So, uh, it's been utilized, and I, I think that they're going to be more utilized, and I think this will be utilized. So it's, it's yeah. great that they're making this opportunity available uh, to us and to the citizens. Yeah, I got one question. This is two of how many? I mean, I know we're getting two, but are we thinking of putting more in this location, or are we going to spread them about? We'll probably spread them about. I got know it. that we've talked a little bit about that. When AMEA made the money available, I think Councilman Burrell and I talked about that. We, we are going to need, see the need for a fast chargers or superchargers downtown at some point. The way this grant works, you have to do two at a time. That's so we'll put two out on 98. There may be need for somewhere else on, on 98 too, but we do eventually think we'll have to put some superchargers downtown. Okay. So this is only the beginning. Yep, that's what I'm, yep. All, right. All right, very good. All right, any further comment or questions for Jessica? Did we make a motion yet? No, I'm no not yet. I'll make a motion. All right, we've got a motion and a second. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, motion passes. Um, item number 17 is also in conjunction with this same item, and that is a resolution that Mayor Sherry Sullivan is hereby authorized to negotiate and execute a memorandum of understanding between the City of Fairhope and the A.I. Cordy Jr. Family Limited Partnership for the purpose of the MOU to facilitate placement of two electric vehicle Supercharger stations on property owned by AI Cordy Jr. Family Limited Partnership, commonly known as Plantation Point. Um, so moved. All right, we got a motion. Second. And a second. Any further discussion? We had all our answers. Got answers to our questions in the work session. Yep. Thank you. All right. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, motion passes. Um, number 18. Uh, this is a resolution that the City of Fairhope authorizes the submission of an application to ADECA requesting an FY 2022 Land and Water Conservation Fund grant and authorizes Mayor Sherry Sullivan to sign all required grant application documents on behalf of the city. Total project cost estimate is $250,000. And the 50-50 match, the city's estimate would be $125,000. So moved. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? And just, just to the comments of, from the citizens earlier, as I just, I think that, um, you know, we, we need to be mindful that there are a lot of people with that that express that opinion, not only about the North Beach Park, but even um, the the Bluff, the the South Beach Park. Mm -hmm. A lot of people want to keep it natural and keep keep the charm, and you know that kind of just 
fortunately fit kind of fit my narrative that wasn't planned but it also means you don't always have to go after money to make things you know and have as many bells and whistles as as you think you may want because there are a lot of people out there that that want to keep things simpler here for sure mm -hmm. all right good comments um all those in favor of the resolution please say aye aye, aye. aye. any opposed all right, motion passes. Um, item number 19 is appointment uh, to the bicycle and to the pedestrian bicycle committee of Jack Graves. And uh, Jay is not here, but I'm assuming if it's on the agenda that the pedestrian bike committee is in favor of this. So, would anyone like to make a motion? So moved. Second. We've got a motion and a second. All right. Any further discussion? All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, motion passes. Uh, item 20 is a recommendation that uh, Street and Traffic Control Committee recommended uh, to remove excessive no parking signs at the public park and beach access on North Mobile Street at Perdido Avenue. And I know Kevin gave us a little bit of background that Jack did on that. So, would any? Chief back there. Oh, Chief, yeah, you're here. Was that just because they had put, put out a lot of extra signs and trying to prevent people to parking there and it's a public road, public access point. Yeah, that's correct. It was about nine out there from the intersection. So it was excessive. Okay. So have we already removed those or we're waiting on approval I of this? I believe that they're already removed. Okay. But we rode by there today and it didn't seem to be as many. So all right. Council? So move. Got a motion? Second. And a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, motion passes. Item number 21 is a resolution. Uh, the city of Fairhope's water line near the Grand Hotel needs immediate attention and needs to be replaced. And the uh, city of Fairhope declares an emergency that the water line near the hotel needs immediate attention and uh, authorizes Mayor Sherry Sullivan to hire a contractor to assess the damage and appropriate the money not to exceed $63,000 determine what measures uh, to take for making emergency repairs to this critical public facility. And this does include um, the actual repairs to be made. So 63000 would be the not to exceed cost. Does anyone have any questions for Jason or the mayor on this item? Or would you like to speak to it? So, you please do. Yeah, you stuck around all this time. You might as well get your money's worth. The only reason is I sure don't like to talk. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to clarify that is labor only, not materials. We're furnishing the materials, okay. And we have made the decision on what work to be done. It's a directional bore, and it's under the waterway just north of the Grand Hotel on Scenic 98. There, if the bridge that has that's blowed out, so we're going to pull back. It's going to be a longer bore, and a gradual instead of a turn down all at once. So this won't happen again. So it's gonna it's gonna be a five probably a four hundred maybe a five hundred foot shot. So that's the reason it's something that we can't do, and we're having okay. a contractor with a bigger machine. Well, so the material um, we're providing materials is that something that we've already got in inventory, or are we having to go out and acquire? We've got them? part of the materials in inventory. It's HDPE. The other will just be replacing inventory. Okay, so sixty three thousand plus. Yeah. How much? I'm gonna make a motion that incorporates that if you don't okay. mind. I, yeah. I want to make a motion to. Uh, Declare the emergency to take care of the, the water line needs uh, in the Grand Hotel in that area, uh, and that uh, we appropriate $63,000 to determine what needs to be done and to provide labor, uh, but not to include the materials which will be provided at additional cost to the city for that critical public facility. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Brown. We've got a motion. Second. And a second. Any further discussion? I didn't amend it. I just uh, made the motion to approve all that. I just kind of threw it in the motion. Uh, okay. Uh, any further okay. discussion, Council? Well, Get it on the record. Got it. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> nope. All right. Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Motion passes. Uh, public participation. I know we've got a gentleman here with the Scouts, and I'm assuming you're working on a merit badge. Would you like to come up and tell us what you're working on? Run the meeting? Since you, you sat through the entire thing. And, uh, yeah. Council President, while he's making his way yes, up, sir. Before, before we adjourn, I want to make um, another comment. Or sure. Two, yeah, that'll be fine. Yes, sir. Welcome to the meeting tonight. Hi, or um, 
My name's Ken Skibnes, and I've been working on the Citizenship in the Community Merit Badge. Yeah. All right, um, Citizenship in the Community okay. Merit Badge. Fantastic. Well, thank you for coming and joining us tonight. Glad you were here tonight. Thank you. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. Good Learn, luck. Learned Good a little luck, something. brother, with that eagle. <laughs> no far. <laughs> All right. I don't see anybody left uh, from the public to address uh, the council, but Councilman Burrell, if you'd like. Yeah, to I just want to make a couple of closing comments. Just, just point this out. Some, this, uh, put some, some figures together real quick. And, and tonight, uh, we approved. Eighty-two thousand dollars of unbudgeted items, just just in tonight's meeting. Sometimes we're low, sometimes we're more than that. You know, some we've had two hundred thousand dollar items, but if you average that over twenty-four meetings a year, which I hope that it's not always that high, just to put it in perspective. That's one point nine seven million dollars in unbudgeted expenses, which is a little bit less than ten percent of our general fund budget. So, to put things into perspective, as we were talking about. You know, going into our budget season, I always think it's good to put some contingency in there. And one of the ways that you can do that is to, you know, look at the previous year's expenses and budget it based on that. And then you always have you always have additional monies because you hope that the way we're growing, you get additional uh, tax revenues. So that you would may budget. not always be the case, but it's always safe to bet on the previous year's budget. But would you be betting on the previous year's expenses or the previous year's revenue? Uh, revenues. revenue. Okay. Revenue. revenue. Keep holding that. Right. And then, you know, and ours has grown so quickly, that might be ultra conservative, but somewhere in between there. Well, I know we hold back on, uh, we take, what, 3% off on property tax. We, we estimate 97%. But just, just to give you an idea, and we always come out smelling like a rose. I always just want to keep it at everybody's attention just – just for that one time, it, it, it bites us, you know. Well, I think we, we can all admit that the last couple of years have, have been very uncertain, and we can probably imagine the next couple of years are going to be very uncertain. So. We're going we're gonna, to it, – it, it's getting difficult. Like I said, I'm serious about keeping our talent, and, 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 and we're going to have to pay them. And we've, we um, used to be the highest – from everything I'm hearing now, we're not anymore. I'm, I'm in favor of that. I understand the importance of talent retention and the difficulty of talent acquisition. So I think the city staff will be on board with that. Um, I do think that might be a decent time to also talk about trying to increase our, our rainy day fund too, when we're, if we can squeeze that you, into the you, budget. You could in the same we got year, so many I'm, expenses I'm, I'm, that we're what I'm thinking we're dealing with too that it's hard to justify. But I'm just gonna go ahead and put it out there for the record too. I'm, I mean I'm, I'm when we're talking about the employees, I mean I'm talking let me just, I'll just throw it out there for a second. I'm thinking five percent. That's my that's my, my baseline number. Well, well the cost of everything has gone up significantly. And, you know, so. and that that may not even be enough. Well and we have been working with the personnel board on the compensation study and then everybody's tired of hearing about the compensation study. But what we've done, because it was done so long ago, we've asked them to take about 10 jobs and kind of spot check those since it was done two years ago to make sure we're still within the range. We should be able to present that to the council in, in June, give you a copy of that, let you look at it, and maybe talk about you know, where we can make some adjustments to some of the, to some of the job pay grades. So um, we will be bringing that to y'all in June to look at as well. Are we fully staffed, though, Mayor? We, I mean, we pretty, need, for the most part, good? I think everybody's doing pretty good. The problem that we have is just turnover. You know, everybody's chasing a dollar. Yeah, we need so, to start yeah, talking yeah. more about that incentive, right. you know, uh, pay. And, and, and we, nobody wants to talk about disincentives, but sometimes, you know, when we hire people and we train them and then they leave, uh, and, and we've paid to, to train them, and that, that gets into a, a difficult situation yeah, as well. We, we're doing employment contracts for some of that stuff, you know, where we're training them, like linemen and right. police officers, those kind of things, um, you know, doing some employment contracts. That, to make that sure only that works if you pay them fairly, though, That's right? right. Or otherwise, is. you just harbor Ill, Ill feelings. So, yeah. um, I just want to, going into budget season, I want to, put that personally, that's my expectation is what we need to be looking at. Okay. Yeah. Um, Mayor, speaking of uh, budget season, I know y'all are already starting. If you haven't yeah. started now, you're starting next month. We are. When are we looking? And I know you already gave us a calendar. I just don't have it handy. When will the council start sitting down and having budget meetings? We will July? start. We'll start the work sessions in June. June, okay. Um, the last work session in June will be a budget meeting. So June, July, August. Um, and we will start doing individual meetings, you know, probably the first of June sometime. And, and so we've made some weeks. changes to the purchasing policy. So yeah. council now would be a good year to 
dive a little deeper maybe on uh, on those budget items. And, and I will say questions. that Kim's doing a great job of um, one thing, you know, we talk about un, unbudgeted expenses. I mean, Kim and I both, you know, try to keep a check on that. That's one thing we look at when we go through these green sheets and we're making sure that, you know, they're telling us where they're going to cut. Chief and I had a conversation today, you know, about, about some additional costs that she has and where she is in her budget to look to see if we can't recapture some of that. So we are trying to really, you know, hold the, the leadership team, at least their feet to the fire when they're looking at the budget, if there's unbudgeted expenses, to make sure they know they have to make that up somewhere. It would take some comfort in knowing that although we're being hit with inflation and so everybody's standard of living is going down if they're not making if they're not keeping up their pay is not keeping up with inflation but because of those because of those inflationary costs we're also our, our tax revenue sales tax revenue mm -hmm. will increase due to that inflation to offset mm -hmm. what we need to do to take care of our people of course some of that run leads to runaway inflation so you yeah, be no. careful with that you know, yes, yeah, tit like tat. You got snowball anyway. rolling downhill, sort of. Right, but you know you're going to recover some of that. Well, we're seeing increased fuel costs too. We were just yeah. hitting our bottom line. Yep. All right. Well, good comments, Council. Uh, would anyone like to make a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Motion and second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Meetings is adjourned. Man.